brought a Bible with you, you can open with me to the Gospel of John, John chapter 8. And we're going to begin by looking at verses 31 and uh, 32. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. And Jesus is given some uh, pretty simple but yet very uh, clear and powerful <laughs> instruction to some Jewish believers who have now put their faith in him. They're trusting in him. And this is what it says in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'm going to read it one more time. Is that okay? Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word... Then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right? So Jesus has given some instruction here, and really uh, a command, really. It's like, you, you really need to, to continue, to continue. You need to, to keep going. You need to keep moving forward. And it's not that it wasn't good for them to believe on him. How I many know that's, that's a good thing, right? And not that it wasn't right for them to trust him or put their faith in him. It's, it's not that that wasn't a good step. What he's really saying is there's, there's more steps. There's, there's more that I have for you. So you need to keep going. You need to, you need to continue in my word. Continue in this truth. Con continue in my teaching. Continue in following me. Don't just start well, but I want you to stick with it. I want you to finish well. I want you to abide, remain, dwell. I want you to stay hooked up to me. I want you to remain in me. Remain and abide and continue in my words. I want you to keep going. I want you to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Now to kind of get a, a greater understanding of the power and the significance of what he's saying, you kind of got to work your way, you got to work your way backwards, right? So if you look to the gospel of John chapter 8, in the very first part of this chapter, you'll find a, a story that you may be familiar with. And it's, it's a story about uh, a woman who was caught in the act, act of adultery. Now, we know it takes two to tango, and so that's kind of another story. There's a guy somewhere who's getting away with something, all right? But he's probably one of the guys in the story with a rock in his hand, if I'm honest with you, all right? But regardless of that truth, um, this woman's caught in the act of adultery, and then she's, she's brought to Jesus by people who really don't care for her. They're really trying to, to trip Jesus up, all right? And so they bring this woman to Jesus like she's caught in the act. The, the law says, the Mosaic law says that she should be killed. She should be stoned to death. What do you say? And Scripture reads that he pretty much ignores them for a moment, which had to be very irritating, by the way. If, if, if you're one of those guys who's trying to get Jesus' attention, and you're not getting his attention even by this situation, and he... They bring this, this woman to her and they say this and Jesus is pretty much ignoring, and the, ignoring them and they, they're like, no, no, what do you want us to do? What do you say? And Jesus says something. And I think, again, you're probably familiar with it. It's very powerful. He says, he who is without sin casts the first stone, right? So it says that they began to drop the stones from oldest to youngest. How I many know the longer you live, the more you know you need mercy? Praise the Lord. It's like the longer you're like, and mercy for everybody. Praise God, right? They, they begin to, to walk away and they begin to drop the stones and all of this. And this woman experiences the absolute, unmerited, undeserved, unearned grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the mercy of God, the compassion of Jesus, the love of God. You have to know that was a life-altering moment for her because she's very literally uh, on death row right there. You know what I mean? It's like not only is she ashamed, embarrassed, condemned, guilty, busted, you know what I mean? Not only is all that, but literally she is about to die, all right? And if Jesus was simply to concur with those other people who were accusing her, she would have, but he did not. He did not. And so Jesus tells the woman, look around you. Where, where are your accusers? And then he says something very powerful, and this is what I want you to see. He says, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. So now this woman who has experienced grace Compassion, love, forgiveness, mercy, favor from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's telling her, now that you've experienced this grace, love, mercy, compassion, he says, I want you to leave here and I want you to leave here different. I want you to go a different way. 
I want you to live a different life. Now, he's not asking for perfection from her. However, he's asking her to take steps that are in a different, in a different way, leading down a different path, going down a different road, right? And so Jesus, when he goes on to say, if you really want to be a disciple of mine, it's going to take more than just like one step. You're going to have to, you have to go a different way. You're going to have to live a different life, right? How many are thankful for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? How many are thankful for his mercy, his compassion? How many are thankful for the blood of Jesus? We got to, man, what a wonderful thing. But the reality is this, once you have made Jesus the Lord of your life, listen, you receive salvation and salvation is free, but following Jesus, discipleship will cost you something. Grace is, it's undeserved, unmerited. You don't, you, you, you. You didn't have to die on the cross for your sin. Jesus did that for you. He made a way for you. He paid the price for you. You just received that by faith, man. Man, whew, I'm so thankful. One more time, anybody else thankful for that? Absolutely. Everybody here should be like, I am thankful for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, once you take that first step of faith, now we've got to take more steps. There's more that God has for you. There's next steps that he has for you. And so Jesus saying, if you continue, all right, and abide and, and stay, stay hooked up here and keep walking this thing out, he says, then you will be my disciples for real. If you keep going, then, then, you, then there's some real good stuff that I have for you if you'll keep, you'll keep following, if you keep going. Now he's saying this because the reality is this, not everybody keeps going. Not, not everybody, because you, you remember that, that scripture we just read, and right, what was it, John 8, 31? He said, and it's a big first word, he says, if. Everybody say if. Like, uh, it's up to you. What are you going to do? The Lord said it to me this one uh, way one time when uh, we were youth pastors and I was a little bit frustrated with some teenagers who I didn't feel like were serving Jesus real great. And so, which is not abnormal. All right. So it's like, uh, like you can do better. <laughs> if I could jump in your skin and make you serve Jesus, I would. All right. I kind of felt like that. And I was upset. And I was a little bit frustrated and feeling bad. I'm like, man, we're doing a terrible job and like, you know, you know, all this stuff. And the Lord said it to me like this. He said, I, I didn't disciple anyone who didn't follow. I didn't disciple anyone who didn't follow. Like they had, they had to follow. They, so think about the disciples that, that Jesus said, follow me. They, the ones he said to follow me actually had to leave everything and follow. They were free moral agents just like you. Like, unless you're a child or teenager and your parents forced you to be here today, you chose to get up this morning. You chose to brush your teeth. You chose to get ready. You chose to come to church. You chose, if you gave nobody for you, you, you did that. You wanted to honor God. You were just, right? All of that, you, you chose. And so the disciples, when they're following Jesus, that was a choice that they had to make. They had to leave the boat, leave the net, leave the business, leave the family, leave the stuff. And like, I am going to follow Jesus. Not just one day, but they had to choose every day to follow Jesus. Listen, at any point, any of those disciples who followed him very literally were with him for three some years on the earth. At any point, they could have they got up one morning and said, I'm out. I, I'm bailing. I'm done. You know what I mean? Like this, this is a little, this is a little too much. You know, it's a lot, lot, you know, this teaching's getting really tough, you know, and like some people love him and now, and some people hate him. And this, this is really, this is a lot. This is a lot. I'm going back to daddy's house. You know, I'm going back to the fishing business. I'm, I'm going back to tax collecting. I'm going back to whatever it is my hand was going to before. But instead of that, every single day they're getting up and saying, whatever Jesus says to do today, if he says go the other side, we're going on the other side. If he says we're having fish for lunch, it's fish for lunch. You know what I mean? Like he says, get the crowds together and do, we're going to get the crowds together. If he says to seat them in groups of 50, we're going to seat them in groups of 50. If he says to, you know what I mean, find somebody with any kind of food uh, and, and, and I'm going to, you know, I want it. Uh, we're going to find some little boys, some fish and bread. You know what I mean? We're going we're gonna to do whatever he says to do every single day. Every single day. You know, the scripture says that take, take up your cross daily. 
Take up your cross. I think many times people fail in following Jesus or following through or continuing because they, they feel like it's just too big, too massive. It's like, oh my gosh, like I got to serve Jesus for like 45 years. You know what I mean? I got, I got a 50, 60 years. I'm like, I'm going to go to church. We're going to do this. and got to do that. Don't do this and don't do that. And can't go to that on Saturday night. I have to do this on Sunday morning. And they're like, you know, I, mean, God, I got to rearrange my whole life, my whole schedule and like try to be good and try not to be bad. You know what I mean? Like, and try to be around the good people people and not be around the bad people and try not to be one of the bad people. I mean, like all of these things. And it's like, you, you try to, you try to like take a, a too big a bite out of the whole thing. Here's the reality. You need to serve Jesus today. Let me ask you this question. Can you serve Jesus for 24 hours? Some of y'all looking at me like, I don't know, it's pretty tough. <laughs> Come on, can you choose to follow him for 24 hours? Think about how many times scripture talks about just doing stuff for a day or how God does stuff for a day. Like scripture says that he'll give us daily bread. His mercies are new every single morning, right? Even in the Old Testament, he, there was manna that was provided. The majority of the time, the manna just lasted for one day. It's like you got to trust him every single day. Think about it. So when it comes to serving Jesus or following Jesus, you don't need to think about like, oh man, 50 years, and I'm just trying to make it through and survive and get to the sweet by and by. And, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. Think about it. Today, can you serve Jesus today? Can you love him and love others well today? Can you be generous today? Can you take some time and pray today? Can you spend some time in his word today? Can you abide and continue in his words today? Can you forgive today? Can you be merciful today? Can you walk out what he has commanded today? Take it one day. Anybody remember that old country song? Come on. Maybe it's not a country song. Maybe it's a beautiful old hymn the Gaither sang. You know what I mean? It's like, one day at a time. Sweet Jesus. Come on, y'all. It's like a Willie Nelson special. He ain't, I don't even know if he might be saved. I don't know. He's a very happy saved person. I, I don't know. <laughs> He's a he, uh, herbal specialist. Yeah. Anyway, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, just stay there. Stay there. <sighs> One day at a time. And it's so funny. It's a real simple song and a real simple truth, but it's, it's, really, it's really powerful. Remember the offering message I talked about, you know, where your treasures that your heart will be also? Jesus goes on to say, like, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own stuff. Right? So when it comes to serving the Lord, it's like so many times we're like, I got to do this really, really big. But no, 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 just, just today. Just like one, one. So for the disciples, it's like they don't know what next week's going to hold for the next whatever time Jesus is here. They just know today. And I know, well, look, we all want to plan our life out. We got a five-year plan, 10-year plan. If my IRA does this, if my 401k does this, then in 25 years I got this. And like we all like to plan everything out. But if you have learned anything about 2020 and 2021, it's like, just know you just can't plan everything out and just work out just the way you thought. You are going to have to follow Jesus and have faith in him every single day. Something crazy might happen today, but guess what? I'm going to follow Jesus anyway. I promise you, I will never have more faith in my Roth IRA than I have in Jesus. There ain't no amount of money. There's no amount of government assurance. There's no amount of what anything humanity can provide that's going to give me complete peace like the master Jesus can. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good preaching. I should drop the mic and just walk off and just be like, that's done. Let's go home. That's the truth. One day, and I'm just going to serve Jesus. I'm going to serve Jesus today. Right? So Jesus said, if you continue, if you continue, stick with it. It'll be worth it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Don't quit. Follow through. Don't back up. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. If 
if you were to go backwards from John chapter 8 to John chapter 7, John chapter 7, it says that Jesus' own brothers didn't even believe in him. You go back to John chapter 6, you find that Jesus had multiplied the loaves and the fish, and there are thousands of people who love Jesus, right? They love him. I mean, wouldn't you love him too? It's like he's healing people, delivering people, teaching people, and then after it's all over, we have a buffet. It's like, this is wonderful. We, we really, really love Jesus. And then he says these words. He's like, all right, if you really want to be my disciple, you're going to have to eat my body and drink my blood. How I many know Jesus is really good at getting a crowd and really good at thinning out a crowd? You know what I mean? It's just like, hey. There were many who believed on him. But then scriptures, this is what it says. I want you to see this. John chapter, John chapter 6, and this is verse 66, 67, 68, says, From that time, many of his disciples went back. They went back and walked with him no more. Right? So the same crowd who celebrated, come on, the fish sandwich, is now the same crowd. He's like, and that was good. That was a good sandwich, but it's... Peace, deuce, out, done, gone. That wasn't. That's a little too far, Jesus. You, 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 you know what I mean? That, that's that's weird. That's that's not cool. Like I don't like that. Like bread, eat your body, drink your blood. Like all this. So it didn't seem to bother Jesus all that much. You have to love the confidence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's like, he's not living for the approval of people. Clearly, right? He created everything, all right? So he's clearly not bothered, all right? But then he turns to his disciples. This is what he says to them. This is what he says to the 12. After many have walked away, he turns to the 12 and, and says this, do you also want to go away? Like, so? What you gonna do? The crowd left. How about you? Are you gonna continue? Are you going to remain? Are you going to stay with me? Are you going to keep going? Or are you done? And I love the response that Peter gives. And he always, he always has some kind of response. You know, he'd be the one that if he was on the, if he was in school and on the, the Zoom call, everybody would be like, shut up, Peter. The teacher would be like, shut up, done, Silence. Anybody on a, been on a Zoom call and one person kept talking the whole time? T tell the truth. Don't lie. Hey, Amen. I was, in a, I was on a Zoom call like last year with a bunch of pastors and this one pastor, his kids were crying, his dog was barking and all that sorts of, and John Maxwell, leadership guru, was teaching while this is happening. And so John Maxwell's like, kid, you please shut up. You know, pretty much what happened. All right. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Don't you wish you could do that while some people were talking in your face? All right, we'll stop right there. That's too much. <laughs> and Silence. All right. If you don't know what I'm talking about, people may think that about you, all right? So just beware. <laughs> That's not in my notes. That's just to wake you up a little bit. <laughs> but Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So, so, Peter's engaged in a different way than the people who just like the sandwich. Peter's engaged like, I have left everything. I got nothing to go back to. I think for, for many Christians, the reason they go back is because they left something back there to go to. Like Jesus is... Plan A, but if it don't work out, I got a B, C, D. E, F, we can go through the whole alphabet. Y'all get, y'all get. Uh, like, if this don't work out, this service, Jesus stuff don't work out, then I'm going to go back, right? And Peter's saying, what are we going to go back to? There is, there is nothing that fishing did in my life that can take the place of your words, there is no, no amount of business or stuff or people or accolades or rewards or whatever that could come from people that could even come close to touching what it's like to just be with you. Like, I would rather be with you like, come on, uh, skate or die. You know what I mean? It's like, we're, sorry, it's a video game. All right, so I mean, like, I'm, in, I'm, I'm ride or die. Like, we are in this thing with you. 
We aren't going anywhere. We are in this thing for, for what you are bringing to the table. We are not going anywhere else. There's nothing and no one else that even compares to the peace that you produce, the truth that you deliver, the joy that you give, the healing that you bring to people's lives. We want to be right in the mix when people come. We want to be right in the mix when people go. We want to be there on Easter Sunday and the Sunday after. Y'all better say amen. Y'all in the room. Come on. Well, where, where else are we going to go? We're sticking with you. So whatever the future is that you have for us, we want that. We want that. We, we want that. So when Jesus says, if you continue, you're my disciples indeed. All of that was leading up to him saying that. Multitudes, departures, gut checks. Even a woman who had been caught in the act but received grace and mercy. Jesus says, you need to continue. How the older I get, the more appreciation, respect I have for people who don't just start something but finish it. You know, I remember when I was a, I was a junior high kid and I was playing tennis, baseball, a couple other little sports, and one time when my dad was out of town on a ministry trip, I'm sure I, I talked to my mom into letting me quit baseball. And so I, I quit. You know, I was probably 10, 11 years old, not old. My dad came home. He said, Aaron, what happened while I was gone? Did you quit baseball? I'm like, well, well, yes, sir. I'm like, I quit baseball. And, you know, he said, well, what are you going to do then? So I'm going to play tennis. He said, oh, yes, you are. I got a little scared, you know what I mean? Like, what do you mean, oh, oh yes, you are. <laughs> you're going to take lessons. You're going to practice. You're going to be on the team. You're going to put on the work, and you are never going to quit tennis. Baseball is the last thing you're ever going to quit. I'm like, my God. Pretty serious about this tennis business. <laughs> he wasn't serious about tennis business. He said, if you start quitting things, there's going to come a day in your life where things are going to get difficult on the job. You'll quit. There's going to come a day when things get tough in your marriage. You'll quit. There's going to come a day when things get tough with your kids. You'll quit. There's going to come a day when things get tough in whatever area of your life, and you'll want to quit. You are not going to be a quitter. What was he saying? You're going to have to continue. And obviously it meant more than just in this natural life, because things get tough when you're serving Jesus. Things aren't always easy, but guess what? You've got to continue. You've got to keep moving forward. You've got to stick with this thing. Right? You've got to say, you know what? God has a, a future for me. So the Apostle Paul said it like this, and this is one of my favorite, favorite passages of Scripture. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. They'll put it on the screen. It says it like this. The Apostle Paul says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, you got to love the Apostle Paul. He's a classic preacher, you know what I mean? Because he says one thing and then he gives you three things, right? It's like he's closing, but it's going to take 30 minutes. And that's what I'm doing right here. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I believe in the Apostle Paul's heart and mind, that was like one simultaneous motion. Like I am leaving back here and I'm moving forward here and this is like, this is what I'm doing. I like the Passion Translation. It says it like this in verse 13. It says, I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I'll leave it on the screen for a moment so you can see it. 
I forget all of the past and I fasten my heart to the future instead. That means the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that I thought were, that like that really meant something to me, my family, my lineage, my stuff, my education, right? My position, I leave that all back there. And all my mistakes, I leave all of that back there too. All the junk, all the things that I've done wrong, all the things, I'm leaving that all back there and I'm choosing, and I believe it's what the Apostle Paul's saying. Every single day, I'm choosing to fasten my heart to the future that God has for me. No matter what yesterday looked like, no matter what last month looked like, no matter what last year look like, no, what, no matter what the past 10 years have looked like, I am choosing today to fasten my heart to the future that God has for me. I am pressing on. I'm moving forward. Hallelujah. I'm moving forward. I believe there's some people in the room that that's, that needs to be your heart cry today. That needs to be your thing. That needs to be like, you know what? That's exactly what I'm doing today. I'm leaving the past in the past, and I'm moving forward to the future that God has for me. Come on, anybody in the room, that's you. You say, that's me. I'm, mo I'm moving forward every, every single day. I'm choosing to move forward. How can I take another step in stepping into the future that God has for me today? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. One of my favorite quotes is, is from a man by the name of Dr. Or Roberts. And um, I like it so much, I, wrote, I write it in all the covers of my Bibles. If I ever get a new Bible, I write it in the cover. I just want to see it every time I open my Bible. And he said it like this, and I think we have the, the quote there is, don't park by your failures and don't park by your successes. Don't get stuck. Don't park by your failures. I'm not going to live there. I'm not, not going to stay there. I got to move forward, right? I recently read, read in a book and, and uh, it's talking about Emmett Smith. Have you ever heard of Emmett Smith? Hard to even mention him because he's a Dallas Cowboy, you know what I'm saying? It's just tough, but I'll do it. It's a good illustration. All-time rushing leader in the NFL, all right? Running back and all that, right? So some, some people were asking him the, the key to his success. And he said, I give myself 24 hours. Give myself 24 hours. If I have a terrible, terrible game, terrible practice, all right, I got, got one day to just kind of like, oh, that's terrible. Whoa, I feel terrible about it. But I move on the very next day. I got one day. He said, if I have a great game, break all the records, do whatever it is. It's like, ah, oh, celebrate it for one day. Next day, back to the grind. I'm working. What is he saying? The simple principle of I'm moving forward every single day. Come rain, come shine. I'm moving forward. There's another great man of God by the name of Dr. Lester Summerall, and he was so passionate about moving forward that he, when he built his house, he built a drive-through garage so that he wouldn't have to go into reverse to leave his house, so that he'd only be driving forward. In his older age, when people would drive him around, he'd tell him, he said, better make sure you park right because we ain't backing out of here. Wherever we're going, you better make sure we can move forward. Now, it's a very practical thing and almost like doesn't make a lot of sense in, in a natural way. But in his heart, in his mind, is like, I'm moving forward so intentionally every day of my life that even when I drive, I'm driving like that. I'm moving forward. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. The Lord said it to me like this, and I felt like it was for more than just me, but for many of you a few months ago, and it's really in the middle of kind of last year and all the stuff that's going on, you know, the Lord just said it to me like this, you're doing better than you think you are. And I, I said that, I think it was a Wednesday night and maybe on a Sunday a couple of times, you're doing better than you think you are. And that's for those of you who you're, you're taking steps forward, may not look like it's producing a lot, doesn't seem like it's like making a big difference, but you're taking steps, you're doing better than you think you are because it's making a bigger impact than you realize. So keep going. Let me ask you this question. What are your options anyway? Go back? No, no, no. You've crossed the bridge. Burn it down and keep going. That way when you look back, you're like, well, that's not an option. <laughs> I just got to keep moving forward then. I press toward the future that God has for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, there may be a days, there may have been days where you messed up royally. But guess what? 
Repent, receive the grace of the Lord Jesus, move forward. There may have been days where you're like super great. Woo, I did so good. Don't get prideful. I heard it said like this, for many people, the greatest hindrance to their future success is their current success. Get a little too full of themselves. Hey, I, I'm doing good. It's like, hey, careful. Pride comes right before destruction and a fall. Don't get, stay humble. Listen, it takes faith, it takes courage, and it takes humility to follow Jesus. Day one and day 1,000. <laughs> get started, you got to repent. You turn to Jesus. But then, guess what? Day two, three, four, five, six, we're going to keep following to the future that God has. How many of believe God has a future for you? Don't be hopeless. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't, don't go back. If you've been around church, you may be familiar with this kind of wording or terminology, but backsliding. You ever heard of the word backsliding or backslider? It's like, eh, ooh, that sounds, that sounds bad. You know, what, what does that really mean? I mean, well, in context of what we just read just a moment ago, it's like, basically it was people who were following Jesus who turned back. But if you've been following Jesus for any length of time, weeks, months, years, maybe even decades, the reality is this, there is no neutral in serving the Lord. If you're trying to just maintain, the reality is this, you drift, right? But if you will be intentional every single day for the next 24 hours, I'm gonna serve Jesus. And you may like this and not like this, and I heard, I'm gonna turn my iPad off, that give you some hope. It keeps me going for like five minutes. Doing a great job. minister, he, he said it like this, and he was talking about marriage. And someone was asking, well, how can you know you're going to be faithful to your wife forever for the next 20, 30, 40 years? He said, I can't guarantee that. He said, but I can choose to be faithful to my wife today. I can choose today. I can't choose 10, 20, 30 years, but I can choose today. And then tomorrow, I can choose that day. And then the day after that, I can choose that day. And then the day after that, I can choose that day. And then, y'all follow where I'm going with this? And then the day after that, I can choose that day. So how many of y'all can serve the Lord today? How many of y'all can be generous today? How many of y'all can be kind today? Come on. How many of y'all can walk in love today? Forgiving today? What happens when you begin to make those choices on a daily basis, they add up. They add up, and you'll find yourself further down the road than you realize you've gone in following Jesus. I promise you this, anyone in the room who's been serving the Lord for longer than a year, two, three years, four years, five years, if you've moved forward and pressed intentionally on a daily basis, when you look back, you realize, God's brought me a long way. Come on, anybody in the room, you're like, God's brought me a long way. He's been really good to me. I, I may not be exactly where I, I, I want to be or going to be exactly, but God's brought me a long ways, and I'm going to keep going. Anybody in the room say, I'm going to keep going. Like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep moving forward to the future.